and welcome to the Bullcast Podcast. I'm Katie Pickler, and with me today are some, uh, not new voices, but uh, kind of some new repeat ones, I guess. We've got Cameron Spann. Hello, hello. And instead of Court, we have Katie Winsett. Hello. <laughs> and Nicole Ellis. Hello. <laughs> Nicole is one you've definitely heard us reference as, uh, when we're talking about the lists that are made. This is the Nicole. This is me. <laughs> so Nicole was our guest on the NIL episode, and Keiki, this is her three-peat. She did like life as a 20-something-year-old in the city, uh-huh. and then Broadway. Yep. You're forgetting yes. I was on Generation Wars. Oh, she was. Oh, yeah. So y'all are both three-peats. Millennial. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, y'all are trying to bump court out of the way and be the regulars. Yeah. Do we get jackets? <laughs> <laughs> Members only jackets. Yeah, we should get like Letterman jackets with the chevrons for every episode you've been on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will be honest. This is an episode that uh, Keiki pitched to me. She sent me a message and said, hey, we need to do this. And so, yeah, sounds like a good one. And so <laughs> the whole theme of this episode is how to practice self-care and really how to practice self-care on a budget. And so, Nicole and Keiki, I kind of want y'all to help really lead this episode for sure. But as usual, we're going to start with a list. So, Nicole, I want you to start it off. All right, this is a list of feel-good comfort movies. Everyone may have a different opinion and have different movies that they just watch to feel good. But this is kind of a general list, and maybe at the end we can list our own favorite movies that we like to watch for comfort. Love it. Number one is The Princess Diaries. I distinctly remember seeing this in the movie theater as a child and obsessing. I wanted Julia Andrews to be my grandmother, and I still do. Uh, Next one on this list, Bring It On. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. I think this was definitely more my generation. And I don't know. Did oh, I love this you movie. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I love Bring It On. <laughs> I will say I know all of these movies because I grew up with four sisters. So these are like, I want you call these chick flicks. They're just girl movies, but I yeah. know them. <laughs> I know them well. All right. Next yeah. on the list is Legally Blonde with Reese Witherspoon. We've talked about Legally Blonde a lot on this show. We have. Actually, so I'm doing PT right now because I got in a fight with an escalator and the escalator won. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, my physical therapist this morning was like, okay, you're going to do this and just kind of like bend up. And I was like, bend and snap? (laughs) Classic. (laughs) Yes. Next on the list is my brother's favorite movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Such a great one. That's another repeat on some of our lists. Yeah. I mean, you can't talk enough about Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's the perfect quotable movie. I don't know if my dad ever said this, but we had a ferret growing up that we named Ferret Bueller. (laughs) That's amazing. That's perfect. <laughs> okay, the next one, I'm actually going to skip this one and give it to Katie because she got really excited. <laughs> so I will take Mama Mia, which I love. ABBA, you can't get enough of ABBA. There's two True. of them, and there may be a third. I will be there to see it. <laughs> yes. Okay, the next one, Clueless. Yes, I uh, I love this movie so much. I watched it way too much, but uh, great, great little feel-good movie. As if. Yeah, as if. <laughs> And I mean, Ant-Man is in it, you know. He has not aged. Can we no. talk about how good he still looks? All Red looks great. Mm-hmm. Cam thinks <laughs> so, too. Like, mm-hmm. Next on the list is My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Now, this is one I have not seen, but I remember it was a cultural phenomenon when it came out. Windex fixes everything. That's what I've learned. You got to zip. Spray Windex on it. <laughs> it's so good. You have to watch it. Um, next up is 13 going on 30. I personally watched this a thousand times as a kid, and I still like to sit in my closet and say 30, flirty, and thriving. <laughs> and uh, that's a great one. And then when they do the thriller dance, like, absolutely love it. Yeah. Uh, with the dress. Yes, that iconic dress. I've seen the dress all over TikTok lately. Apparently, you can buy it for yourself. Oh, you well, can. I almost did. <laughs> And I did see something recently that was talking, trying to break down that movie saying that, you know, if she was 30, she really couldn't have afforded all the things. And it's like, she got a good job. Like, hush. Yeah. She wasn't a great yeah, person, the though. Yeah, Nikes. Yeah. And things weren't as expensive as it was. You know, it's not a delicacy of getting eggs now. <laughs> <laughs> Next on the list, it's also big on TikTok right now. It's got a huge sound going around, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. The perfect Love Kate it. Hudson, Matthew McConaughey duo. That is a funny movie. I did see it's that. It's so theaters. good. And she also has, you can buy the dress, the yellow dress well, too. Well, so I um, had to go to a prom. I was actually a freshman in college, but I was dating a younger guy at the point. Mm. To go to a prom and I bought a yellow dress to try and be like Andy. I love that movie so much. I actually, um, 
Keiki quote, uh, <laughs> quoted that movie when your dad and I have a Snapchat streak. And with him uh, being out of town right now, I was like, you better not let our streak die. And he's like, no, I shouldn't. I was like, don't let our love burn die. <laughs> <laughs> so, Okay. <laughs> Sister Act. Oh, what a great one. And there's multiple of them. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the first one is really the best, but Whoopi Goldberg, just great soundtrack. Just, I mean, nun, like, singer at a casino that's kind of wild, mm -hmm. becomes a nun. I mean, come on. It's such a good movie. The yes. sequel is just as good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next on the list is 9 to 5 with mm -hmm. Queen Dolly. Do, 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 do. Cannot go wrong with Dolly. Ever. Skinny sweet. That's every time. It's like, <laughs> oh, I accidentally put poison. <laughs> what? And next on the list, we have Grease. I think this list could also just be called My Mother's Favorite Movies. Because <laughs> um, I've seen all of these, but not in like a comfort for me way. In a My Mother has them on constantly <laughs> way. No, there's not enough Goldie Hawns on here for her. Like, you know, she's got to have those. Oh, that is true. But like Olivia Newton-John, her hero, her idol. That's a great movie. And still, it wasn't until I was older that I really started questioning like, the car floating at the end of the movie. Why did we never question that before? Yeah, it was odd. Well, there's a lot of questionable things about that movie now. And if you think about it, it's like, ugh, this is kind of cringe. Great yeah. music. Uh, I still love it. <laughs> I mean, it's great. You just got to look past some of the things. I wanted to be a beauty school dropout. Not really. <laughs> I just wanted a song what sung a about me. What a life goal. Yeah, so have I you a song sung about me and pink hair. Have you heard Billy Porter's version of that? No. Oh, oh yes. It's to die for. Okay. I'm, I just had to put my musical theater and put it up. Check it out. <laughs> Um, last on the list is my personal favorite comedy, She's the Man That's with Amanda Bynes. Favorite. Oh my gosh, it's, it's a classic. Yes. Have you never seen it? Oh, no, no, I've seen it. Oh, okay. It's funny. <laughs> um, Amanda Bynes is funny. I love her. She's kind of falling off the deep end. Well, she's coming back for an All That reunion, <gasps> so stay tuned. Oh, yes. up with that show, mm -hmm. man. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can man, take, take your order? order? <laughs> what makes this list feel good? Is it just because there's like a strong female lead and it's got a happy ending? Like, uh, what's the theme here? I mean, Ferris Bueller definitely has a strong female lead. Legally Blonde, Bring It On. I mean, yeah, they all do. Sister Act, 9 to 5. Yeah, it's a strong female lead, good ending. But I think it's like what the whole purpose of it is you find your comfort movie whatever it may be and it, it could change but it, these could be just re remembering simpler times yeah <laughs> i mean yeah it's just it's fun times does anybody have a comfort movie that if you think about it, it's not really comforting it's just really depressing i mean i know a I lot mean, of my, depressing movies <laughs> my comfort movie is the entire twilight saga and uh, so mm -hmm. parts of that are depressing yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I really like Little Women, and there's some parts Ooh, in that movie wow. that are so sad, but I watch it and I love every second of it. Are you team Lori and Amy? Um, yes. Mm. You must not be. <laughs> I am not. Well, which Little Women do you like? I like the new one. I love Florence okay. Pugh, though. That is fair. Florence <laughs> Pugh really made that movie. She was perfect. I I'm trying to think of my comfort movies. Like, I mean, I, I mentioned, I think in a recent episode, like I love Armageddon. Well, I mean, but it makes <laughs> me cry. So I think it's it's different levels of comfort because you, I think everyone has those go-to movies that if they want to have a good cry, they're going to watch it. Um, mm -hmm. Because that is a level of comfort in a way of like, you've got a lot of crap going on and it's like, I just need to cry. I'm going to blame it on this movie. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Cam has a lot of those. Yeah. I will say Braveheart uh, makes me cry, and I'm not ashamed oh, of that. Oh, Braveheart, just, oh, yeah. Man. My comfort movies are... I'm sticking the out. The Patriot, like, Patriot makes you yeah. cry. Mm -hmm. Oh, That's a good one. Yeah. Lord of the Rings and Curious Case of Benjamin Button are my comfort movies. And Benjamin Button is depressing. It's really yeah. sad. Yeah. yeah. But see, I'm from Louisiana, so it's like got this nostalgia thing for me. I don't know. Mm. I have my annual viewings of those movies. Yeah, I think we mentioned last week Inside Out makes me sob every single time oh, I watch it. That's a good one. I mean, I was talking yeah. about it last night and I just started crying. My mom's like, you need help. <laughs> the bing bong scene? It really, it really gets you. It's, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit long, but uh, we care about our self-care. Okay, so I'm going to kind of talk about some facts and stuff and then I'm going to throw this over to uh, Keiki and Nicole to kind of really run with it. But self-care, the practice of taking action to preserve or improve one's own physical and mental health. Self-care means taking care of yourself so that you can be healthy, you can be well, you can do your job, you can help and care for others, and you can do all the things you need to do and want to accomplish in a day. And be in the army too. Like, <laughs> it's just, 
it benefits our better physical, mental, emotional health and well-being. Researchers suggest self-care promotes positive health outcomes such as fostering resilience, living longer, and becoming better equipped to manage stress. Common examples are maintaining a regular sleeping routine, eating healthy, spending time in nature, doing a hobby you enjoy, expressing gratitude. Self-care can look different for everyone, but to count as self-care, the behavior should promote health and happiness for you. Okay, that sounds wonderful and it preach, but let's talk about reality. Go. <laughs> yeah, to be completely honest, I don't think I do any of those things for self-care. What, um, what is self-care for Keiki? <laughs> for Keiki, and I'm really putting myself on blast here, it is getting Taco Bell with one vegetable in it. Uh, so I have my daily vegetable. What, eating... Taco Bell has vegetables? They have lettuce. <laughs> That's lettuce from like the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? That's the kind of lettuce I enjoy. <laughs> I'm okay. with you, Keiki. Okay, Taco sorry. Bell keep, is keep going. Sorry, Kip. <laughs> so I get my Taco Bell. I drink my Diet Coke, which is like water for me. <laughs> I sleep five hours a day, and I get tattoos. <laughs> That's so unhinged, but I love it. <laughs> I'm still vibing, so obviously it's working. You are living your best life right now. Yeah. Hey, you've got to you've got to do what works for you because. I think if your father was here right now, as we're reading all of this, his eyes would literally be rolling in the back of his head because he's like, this, yes. this isn't reality. And, and Cam's over here like, I have kids. This is not reality. I'm just living vicariously through Keiki right now. It's <laughs> Diet Coke, Bell. Taco Bell, and Tats. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole, what's your self-care? Um, mine is not that extreme. <laughs> However, I love to do a skincare routine every single night, and it really just calms me because yeah. it makes me feel good about myself. And you don't have to spend that much money on skincare now. Lots of dermatologists to come out and said, you can just get CeraVe, which is like $5. Mm. I don't know. I just love the feeling of taking care of my skin. <laughs> Me too. What's your skincare routine? <laughs> do you wear a mask and do a facial every night, Cam? Abby gets so pissed off because I like, when we're re getting ready for bed, I brush my teeth and that is it. And oh, Abby no. is like removing makeup and doing the CeraVe and all this stuff and... Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I can't really like uh, discuss. I don't know. I'm just here along for the ride. Keep talking. No, this is okay. Great. So I don't I mean, my self care is crap right now. <laughs> talk just, talk oh, it out. It Come does on. not exist. I mean, it doesn't exist. That's that's the thing is. And I'll be 1000% honest with you. And this is kind of embarrassing to throw it out there. But I uh, was a competitive dancer for so many years and I taught dance and that was kind of my healthy outlet. That was, I was in my happy place when I was there and that, I mean, college has been a while. <laughs> so <laughs> I have yet to really find my happy place. And so that's, that's something I'm constantly trying to figure out self-care. I would say movies, going to the movies is really comforting to me. And I haven't done that in a while, but I think watching like movie trailers, going to the movies. It's just fun to like look forward to things, especially when you're at the theater, you're supposed to be quiet. You're not supposed to have like chatter. If you watch a movie at home, even if it's a brand new one, crap's happening behind you. Like stuff's happening. It's I, I, hard to watch a movie or TV show at home without checking your phone, no matter how much you're into it. Yeah. A movie theater forces yeah. you to yeah. be completely into the story. Yeah. I care about my nails being done, but I'm like looking down at my nails right now and they need to be done. So like, I don't have that routine. I have started this past year and a half starting to do like facials and things like that. Um, that was something I never really did before. And it was, uh, I was fortunate that I always have had great skin. And then my body, you know, I think I hit like 33 and it's like, ha ha, you, <laughs> you must now learn to do your face. You must now do this. And I'm like, oh crap, here we go. <laughs> like you did not prepare me for this my whole life. So Nicole, you were... You were on the straight and narrow for when that karate shop of 33 gets to you. <laughs> Growing up with oily, acne-prone skin will teach you things at a very young age that you'll know for the rest of your life. Yeah. I never had acne. Yeah. How nice. I mean, that's, I that you look well. like you never had acne. I will, you know? But I feel like I'll get a pimple or two for the rest of my life. I feel like you either get acne and like get it over with, or you're, you'll just have a pimple here and there until you're an old man. That's, yeah. Like, I, I'm in that stage. I never prepared. I didn't have acne issues when I was younger, and now I'm like... Uh, what is this random like zit? And I don't know how to prepare for it. I'm like, what is this? And y'all like those that had it have like, oh, here's the routine. I feel it coming. Let's go. But I mean, self care can be so many different things. And I think it's different stages and it can be like, 
going and doing something for yourself, like back in the day, it was probably going to the tanning bed, which you're frowned upon now. But that was kind of one of those, like, it was the 10, 15 minutes it forced me to like, lay down, be calm, not be on my phone. I like was convinced that if you had your phone in the tanning bed, you were going to like, it was going to explode on you. (laughs) Out of all the bad things that could happen in a tanning bed, I wouldn't say that's one. (laughs) Did y'all see the final destination where she oh, died yeah, in the tanning bed? Yeah. That's what I think of. Yes. yes. My self-care is just like disc golf and watching Grizz games. I mean, it's simple. That's very stressful, though, watching the Grizzlies play. Oh, man, the past three games. I want to say that's calming. Yeah, but like self- <laughs> self-care looks different for everybody. For sure. Because yeah. some people would say like me going and getting my hair colored and doing that is self-care. But to me, that's maintenance, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Like getting my nails done, doing facials doing my hair, that's maintenance to me. That's stuff that I need to do to present myself in a certain way. And that's not necessarily like, oh, this is my happy place. I'm doing it for me. Like laying there doing a facial or something. I'm like, are we done yet? Like, let's hurry (laughs) up. And and they play that. The girl the first time played the whole like music or whatever. I'm like, what is this Wait, what music was that? I don't know. It sounded like a ghost. (laughs) It's like the waves crashing and it's supposed to be peaceful and... I'm like, uh, uh, I can't do that. You need to like play some better stuff or we need to talk about like your finances. I don't know something. Gosh, I will say something I love, but I only do it like once every two years is a massage. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that's good self care. And they've got yes. that woo music going, but it's nice. I like the idea of it. I feel like I need it, but then I can't calm down enough to actually do it. Oh, I can get into my zen. I feel like Court would not be able to handle it because it's a lot of touching. He doesn't like And he doesn't do touchy touch. Yeah. I can't compare him that he cannot do massages. Man. <laughs> my father's form of self care is turning on Hamilton yep. and sitting in our den alone <laughs> at six in the morning watching Hamilton. Oh, I love that. What's the common thread with self care here? We've listed some things. Is it just like alone time where you can turn your brain off do you think that's kind of i feel like it doesn't even have to be alone time it's just whatever time you take for yourself where you can either turn your brain off or make it like happy yeah so i went to a a comedian show last night and we had to turn our phones off we had to put them in these little pouches and we were able to comedians uh dave Chappelle and chris rock epic and I mean, it was hilarious, but it was one of those going into it so stressed out of like, okay, I have to have my phone off. You carried it with you, but like you couldn't see through the pouch, nothing. And we had no clue what time it was. And so I was with uh, Daniel and then my cousins. And the first like probably little bit, we're like, what time is it? This is weird. And we kept bringing it up in conversation like, oh, okay, well, oh, I, let me show you. Oh, nope. Don't have my phone. Oh, well, what about? Nope. There kept being reasons that would bring up our phones. And then probably after about, you know, 20 minutes or so, we started just going, okay, well, we don't have our phones. Let's just talk and let's do this and actually be in the moment and listen to the show. And there was the only thing to distract you per se would be people watching and looking at other people and what they're doing. That was interesting to me because it really was forcing you to be in the moment. Because if you go to concerts, you go to any of that stuff right now, what are you doing? You're watching it through your phone half the time because you're taking pictures, you're taking videos, you're snapping videos that people, I'm sorry, but people who are not there are looking at your snap like, I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like they don't care about the videos. It's like when you take pictures or videos of a Fourth of July fireworks and post them. It's like we don't we don't care. We don't care. Doesn't That's even my look good. biggest pet peeve. Yeah, it makes me yeah. angry because the pictures it. don't look good. The videos. No. But I think my whole weird roundabout reasoning for this is I think self care that we may need to start going to it. And it, this was kind of forced upon a lot of us being in the moment. Mm-hmm. I know that my life is flying by way too fast, and it's because. Cam and I have talked about before, we're constantly next step, next step, next thing, next thing. And we never stop to, you know, stop and smell the roses or, you know, the Ferris Bueller quote that life passes you by so quickly. I think self-care needs to be one of those of be in the moment, whatever it is. If it's at the movies, if it's dinner with your best friend, if it's sitting and watching your favorite childhood movie with your child, like it's in different things, but I think that's what America... America needs this. We <laughs> we need to disconnect and be present and be in the moment. And then that kind of fuels us because last night I laughed. I had a great time. It was so much fun. And then it's like, as soon as you get back to the car, get your phone, it's like, okay, reality smacks you again. But it's the thing mm-hmm. is, is that all the messages that came through, nothing was urgent. Nothing was pressing. 
And it was fine that I couldn't respond for a couple hours. But if I had gotten those in those moments, I would have felt I had to respond immediately. That's the beauty of entertainment. Movies and musicals is just escapism. Mm -hmm. And social media has really kind of torn us apart with that because you want to present your best self and make people, I mean, in a way, jealous. Like, look what I did. Look where I've been. And it kind of takes you out of the moment, whatever you're doing, to to capture the photos and the videos and checking your messages. Yeah. I would think going to a Broadway show, like I definitely never have my phone out. So that's a time to disconnect. Yeah. That's a form of my self care that I have not mentioned, but that, yeah, that yeah mine too. <laughs> yeah. Broadway, it's, it's like more formal. And so you're kind of forced not to check your phone. It's weird. Do oh, y'all feel that way? Yeah. Yes. As somebody who works as an usher, if you have your phone out, we will yell at you. Yes. Like you literally can't check your phone unless you want to be screamed at by the people who work there. So yeah, Broadway definitely, it kind of forces you not to be in the moment, but to be in whatever moment the show is introducing you to, which I think is like another thing is uh, self-care can be a form of escapism. Hmm. Yeah. Patty LaPone will also yell at you. <laughs> if That's wondering. true. She will. <laughs> Okay, so let's kind of talk about self-care and budgeting, because obviously, okay, Taco Bell, that's kind of on a lower budget level, but tattoos, that's kind of expensive, Cakey. <laughs> they can be. <laughs> and uh, like Broadway shows, things like that. Um, I mean, disc golf, that can be expensive, adding more disc and traveling to different places. But one of the things is, and I know like right now I'm doing facials like at a salon with a real person, and that's expensive versus Obviously, I could learn some tips from Nicole and do it at home. Not do it, but <laughs> but then my problem is I'd never do it. Like I have to force myself to have somebody else do it. But okay. I will come to your house every night. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> Self care tips on a budget. When we stay grounded in what we actually want, it keeps us from impulse buying. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> so when we do spend money on ourselves as a form of self care, we'll know it's laser focused and actually worth it. I'm going to call bullcrap on this because <laughs> there is definitely a treat yourself attitude. Yes. And it's like, I deserve this. I work my butt off. I have, or I just killed this project or I just got this raise. Treat myself. And I think especially probably like I would think Cam for you having kids and stuff like that, you probably can't have had to change your mind and you can't have that treat yourself mentality. But if you don't have kids yet, then it's easy to go, oh yeah, I deserve this. Yeah. It's not just women, but I think that's kind of a more female thing is treat yourself. Mine is like, get away from the kids yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you can have both personal wellness and a reasonable budget. It's easy to think self-care means giving ourselves expensive things, but self-care can be free and more intentional when we get creative and tap into what we are truly craving. Let's go with this. Cover the basis. Sometimes the most accessible self-care is the simplest. Did I drink a glass of water in the last hour? When was the last time I ate a real meal with a real plate and a fork? <laughs> Cakey? Never. <laughs> Did I get enough sleep last night? No. <laughs> Am I breathing? Maybe. Yes, no. I think we're all breathing. <laughs> this is a great go-to list of questions to consider. Really? <laughs> Are you alive? Yes. I'm going to text all of y'all this. Like, did you drink water? Did, or did you, are you breathing? Are, are you a houseplant? Did you get yes. hydrated? Did you get some sun? Did, did you rest? Look, you'll laugh, but I've made myself start drinking a lot of water and I feel so much better about myself. Like, we talked about this in the, was it the New Year's episode? Yeah, about, about water and how good it makes you feel. It really does. Yeah. I drink like a gallon a day and not even on purpose, but it just makes me feel great. Nicole, you're not a human, you're a camel. I was say, exactly. <laughs> Nicole, I don't feel like you can be in here. <laughs> I have issues. I just haven't mentioned them. I was going to say, like, you're like, oh, I, I have a skincare routine every night. I drink water and Cakey and I are like, Taco Bell. <laughs> Nicole's like, get Nicole in, we're going shopping. Nicole. <laughs> okay, so reevaluate old habits. Switching up your go-to self-care routine can be just as effective as purchasing something new. A simple shift in your routine that says, I'm doing this just for me can offer the same pleasures as making a purchase. Making an at-home coffee instead of going to Starbucks, being aware of those habits. So have y'all done any of these kind of switching? I don't go to Starbucks a lot. I do make my coffee at home. What do you do that's <laughs> bad? Like... <laughs> She cheers on the Giants. I will say yeah, that's that's a that's yeah. a bad habit. I attempted for a while to decrease my fast food consumption, and I have actually, other than Taco Bell. Um, so I bought Duke Chick Fil A nuggets and turkey burger patties and all this stuff that was like similar to what I was eating at fast food places, but slightly healthier, and started making them myself and. 
it really worked. Like I felt better about myself because I wasn't one spending money and two consuming a ton of fast food. And sometimes it is saving you money. It's cheaper. Other times, like we've talked about the craft episode before where it's like, oh, I can make this myself and do it myself. But then you end up spending so much money to do something and it's better to pay somebody to do it. It's like gardening your own veggies. It's like you spend all this money and time and you pull like two bell peppers and that's it. It's like it's just easier to go to the grocery store. It is. But if that's your comfort of being in the garden and and that's your time to be outside, okay, do it. I like mowing. Is that self-care? Yeah. Yeah. It's alone time with with nobody can bug me. Here's, I think, where this is going to fit in. I was talking to a client. um, She's younger, really trying to work her budget out so she can afford a down payment on a house to move out, all this stuff like that. And we're going through her budget. And she said, here's my mandatory and here's my discretionary. Wonder, she literally had everything under mandatory. Everything. And (laughs) it was, um, one of them was on there was Pure Bar. And I said, no, that's not mandatory. And she goes, well, yes, it is. Because if (laughs) I'm not in shape, then my mental's off. Then this, and I was like, okay, I, I get that point. I do. Trust me. I understand that, you know, your health is very important because we've talked about the ripple effect. If, if your health's off, then, you know, that could lead to health issues, which is then is expensive, but Pure Bar is expensive. <laughs> so that yes. in itself is not mandatory. And so there may be like, Hey, I mean, in this day and age, there's enough free videos on the internet that you could do things at home. And when I explained that to her, she was almost very offended by it because it's like, well, no, Pure Bar is life. It is necessary. And it's like, okay, well, then if Pure Bar is life, then you got to cut it somewhere else if you want to be able to start (laughs) saving. And I think that's balancing your priorities and knowing it that if, if you know that your Starbucks coffee you have to have every single day, that's your self care. That's your, like what gets you going in the morning. Great. But then don't have everything else be like, top shelf all the time if it doesn't fit in your budget. Nicole, you want to take the next one? This is appropriate because I do love to read. (laughs) You can visit your local library. If you don't love the cost of books, which they can get pretty expensive, libraries are a great way to enjoy your favorite authors for free. You can also have the Libby app, which I use, and that allows you to check out books on your tablet or your phone. Um, Becoming a patron of your local library is a great way to support your community. (laughs) Katie! I know you you, guys have have not read any. Have you started your one of two books and neither of them? We're, yeah... We're off to a great start. Yeah, because that's what our resolution was to read books. Kiki, are you a book reader? I absolutely am. And I just have to let the world know, your office is next door to our local library. Literally. <laughs> Literally. You can walk there. My dad used to take me to the library when he was going to work because it was so close. She just called both of you out. She did. So our two guests today are just here to shame <laughs> us and that's it. Yeah, I mean, Nicole's over here being yes. a saint. Like, she's got all this together and it's like, where's the skeletons in the closet Look, for her? I hate to work out. That's my one weakness. Okay. You will not find me spending that much money at Pure Bar. Yeah, so exploring at-home workouts, gym memberships can end up costing you a lot. Yep, Pure Bar. It's on here, but it's... Yeah. What is that? Is that ballet? What is Pure Bar? <laughs> no, because like... It's fake ballet. Yep. Oh, um, okay. So you... It's kind of like a mix between aerobics and strength training with a ballet undertone so that you can feel like you're a dancer. But most, that sounds terrible. Most dancers, I'm a dancer trained and I've tried, now I haven't gone to a studio, but I've tried some and I'm like, mm, I don't know about this. But it's kind of like Zumba was like the big thing. And it's like, oh, I'm dancing. And I'm like, no, you're not. Dancing doesn't throw punches in the middle of it. <laughs> Pure Bar basically made its name off of calling a squat a plie so that you feel better doing it. Cakey with a hot take. But yes, I will say self-care, taking care of your body is very important um, because you only have one. And clearly, like with me, getting in a fight with an escalator, I'm not taking care of my body right now. (laughs) And uh, I've been reminded of that. But I will say what I've determined... Obviously, I was very focused on trying to catch that flight. I was not thinking and fell up the escalator and messed up oh. <laughs> messed up my knee. It looks like Wolverine attacked me. But it was, it, and I had this string. Kiki was a part of one of my injuries. I had this string of injuries <laughs> that kept happening. And it was like all in a span of from September to December. I fell up my stairs, up and down at the same time, kind of. 
<laughs> wait, wait, wait. We need what? to go back to that. <laughs> so I was trying to like put boxes up. I was decorating for Halloween. I had socks on. Don't do that. And I like twisted to put a box up on the like the landing part of the stairs and then slipped and tried to catch myself. And when I tried to catch myself, all I saw was the iron railing coming in my face about to hit. So I threw my arm up and then ended up, I had like left elbow, right leg, I mean, all over it. So you literally fell up and down at the same time. Yes, I did that in like September. And then in October, when I was putting up my yard skeletons, um, I had the sledgehammer and because I was stubborn and wasn't waiting for Daniel to get home, smacked my finger and it's still fractured, but I had to go out of town. So I didn't deal with it. I just taped it up, got back, went and checked it out. And they're like, yeah, there's a chunk out of it, but there's nothing we can really do about it now. You've let it start to heal. So that's like a crooked middle finger now. <laughs> and then went to New York with Keiki. <laughs> Or hung out with Keiki while we were there and um, wore the wrong shoes and got yes. the world's largest blister known to man on my foot. Y'all, I, as I've said before, I've competitively danced. I wear heels all the time. I have never had a blister this big in my entire life. I mean, it took me out for a couple of days. <laughs> it was rough. Were so, you wearing heels? I had like heeled boots on. So let me get this straight. Nicole's over here drinking a gallon of water a day. <laughs> Face <laughs> routine. K- Kiki's eating like healthy Chick-fil-A alternatives. And Katie is fighting for her freaking life. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then right after that, after that foot got healed, then went to and did the escalator issue. And that's what finally like broke the camel's back because now it's I've got a uh, grade two sprain in my MCL, a contusion in my oh, kneecap no. and a bruise on my quad muscle. So oh my gosh. <laughs> Can I just say, this is going back to the generation wars, Gen Z and like Zillennial is, they go out in like tennis shoes now. So you don't even have oh, to yes. like kill yourself in heels. So you, it's totally appropriate to wear what white tennis shoes and like, it's in trend. Katie, that night that we were hanging out, I was wearing platform Doc Martens, which are very comfortable and essentially the tennis shoe of boots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. <laughs> My generation is still, I mean... Court made fun of me for when we went to uh, Philadelphia and I changed into like boot heels to go walk around oh and I had, had tennis shoes on and he's like, why'd you do that? I was like, well, in case we take pictures, like I need to look cute. Well, you need to buy some tennis shoes. I you will be so. in style. Try meditation and relaxation. This is what you need after all those injuries. Mm. <laughs> mm, I don't know. Uh, when working out may cause more harm than good or, or living life <laughs> like me trying to just do things like Stairs and escalators and walking. <laughs> Everyday things. Everyday things. Yes. I will throw what reality to me of meditation and relaxation. Um, you know, my job predominantly is sitting in client meetings or sitting at a computer. And I think, I mean, most of y'all's cakeies isn't that way, but I think forcing yourself to get up every little bit and just kind of like, even if you just walk down the hall or if it's a nice day to step outside for a second. I almost feel like that's kind of a meditation or relaxation that if you can set yourself an alarm, I I used to wear the little smartwatch that would yell at me if I hadn't moved in an hour. And then I got annoyed with it because it just kept telling me I hadn't moved. So I stopped wearing it. (laughs) This is what not to do episode. Okay. Don't be Katie. (laughs) I found I hate meditation and I've never been able to do it, but I found that the one time that I can kind of meditate is right when I wake up in the morning so I started waking up five to ten minutes before I actually need to wake up so that I can sit there and just like before I even look at my phone before I start my day I just take five to ten minutes to like think inwardly to have like some perspective on my day on my life and it it has helped me that I got a cat who likes to sit on me. And so I'll pet my cat and I'll just have my five minutes of meditation right when I wake up. And that's the only time I can get it done. But it does help a lot. Yeah, I don't have the patience for meditation. That's, <laughs> no. why, that's why I don't like yoga. I get bored. I'm like, okay, I, I can't sit still with my thoughts for this long. Do we need to listen to the younger generation on this? Because I'm listening, I'm listening to this and I'm like, I get up and realize, oh crap, I, I'm running <laughs> late. Or, you know, say, can I call in sick and not really mean it? <laughs> Yeah, I actually do the same thing, except I don't think about, I just lay there and want to go back to sleep. 
But I do set That's my fair. alarm a little earlier so I can just lay there and not immediately have to jump out of bed. Y'all would die if you saw the number of alarms that I have because I just hit snooze. <laughs> and that, So y'all are meditating, like getting in the moment, prepping for the day, and I'm just hitting snooze until it's finally that last one of like, crap, I have to get up. I've trained my youngest, my five-year-old, to bring me coffee every morning, and it's amazing. Oh, yeah. look at you. <laughs> Sounds like you're talking about a dog. You're like, I trained my dog oh, to do this. Oh, it took some training. Yeah. I have to hand over my iPhone so he can play games, but it's well worth it. I mean, as much as we pick on the generations, I do think that, I mean, simple things like y'all are wearing tennis shoes going (laughs) out and you're much more like taking care of each other and yeah. Katie and I are over here when we wake up just groaning because our back hurts and our neck hurts. (laughs) (laughs) Avoiding stairs and escalators left and right. battling for your life. Okay, so one of the things with self-care and budgeting that comes up a lot when I meet with clients is hanging out with friends. And I've had Mm -hmm. some people that tell me, um, and I think, Keiki, we talked to you about this on your episode, is you've got your strict budget, but then what if that friend calls and maybe they got broken up with, or maybe they got a new job, or something happened and there's a reason why you really want to go and be there with them. You want to hang out with them, but you haven't really built that into your budget. But look at it as that is a form of self-care. Now, obviously, don't be going out drinking with this person like every week, But I think that it's important to be with your people, be with people outside of your day-to-day work. Like, I mean, again, I can't (laughs) say anything like Cam and Court are my BFFs and we work together and... So I don't know. What's y'all's thoughts on friends and self-care? And I think that a, a lot of the hanging out with friends part, like it's important to hang out, but it also, you don't have to spend money when you're hanging out with friends which is something that is easy to forget because it's super easy to be, especially where I live, um, it's easy to be like, oh, let's go meet up at a bar or a restaurant or something. But it's just as easy to say like, hey, let's go to Central Park and just like sit down for an hour or two and chat or let's take a walk. Or like last night I went over to my friend's house and we played games and watched a movie and like none of us spend any money on it and it was fantastic yeah uh for me it, it's easy because a lot of my friends do play disc golf and we have a discord channel it's like hey i'm playing at this course and we all go and it's it's free and we hang mm-hmm. out it's escapism and we just just chill it's nice i mean that's definitely the easiest way when you're looking at your budget of what can you do for free and think back to like high school days when you didn't have money. Although I remember just driving around with my friends. You can't do that anymore. Gas is way too expensive to just yeah. drive around. <laughs> In high school, we'd drive to Sonic and park and we would order one drink every like two hours <laughs> and just sit at Sonic for hours on end. That was my high school experience. Has that just yeah. never changed? It's yeah. just always Sonic? So- no. Sonic is the game Mine too. was IHOP. In Sonic. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah, we would do IHOP if it was super late. Mm-hmm. If, like, Sonic closed, we'd go to IHOP. See, and we'd go to Mexican and then, like, endless chips and salsa oh, and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At your Sonic, was there, like, a cool side where the cool people were? At ours was. But... I was probably not on that side and didn't know about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if there was, I was unaware of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing that's on this list, kind of with self-care, is volunteering. And that's definitely one where it's kind of like feeding the soul and doing something, making a difference. Uh, This past weekend, listeners will know that I used to work at a nonprofit prior to switching careers completely and becoming a financial advisor. But um, I had the opportunity to get back into that nonprofit this past weekend and help them out with some photo shoots prepping for their upcoming fundraiser. And I, uh, you know, there's new kids that I didn't know, but I had some of the older kids that are now grown up show up and it just, it kind of, it fed my soul. Honestly, it was a lot of work trying to help them again. And I, I felt very rusty. Like I had this down to a science before and now I don't know what I'm doing, but at the end of it, I've got this great photo of me with all of them. And it's just, That was really precious to me, but more impactful was the messages I got from them afterwards of just like, I'm so glad you're back involved. Um, It was so great seeing you guys having the gang back together. And it's just, so I think that I had a lot of self-care that came out of that, but they did as well because it was just the simple act of me saying, we all need to get back together for this cause. Let's do it. And then it re-triggered in everybody's memory the fun times we had. Because I think memories can be self-care for sure. It's kind of like old times, bringing it back up and not avoiding the future in the present. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that on a deep level. <laughs> Nostalgia is self-care. And, and 
And that's yeah. that's probably what some of these movies, thinking about to that, yeah. is it's nostalgia. It's like you're, you remember the first time you saw that movie. You remember your your mom laughing at it or something about it. And that's what kind of triggers in your mind. And it's that escape because obviously we're a financial podcast. Obviously, you know, self-care if you're doing too much self-care and not caring about your job, then that's, you know, that's going to cause more stress and it doesn't help. So it's that balancing act, which I think that's the word I used for this year is it's really trying to find that balance. You know, Nicole, I'm sure that your your strategy of starting to wash your face probably, I don't know, you're kind of a freak of nature. You feel like, <laughs> did you just decide and it's just stuck? Yeah, I mean, it's like... <laughs> I can't go to bed without washing my face. I mean, okay, well, she's not a good example. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was normal. I don't know. No, it's, I mean, is that, I mean, am I the oddball here that you sent no. your mind to do something? Okay, come on, Kiki. Yeah, be with me on this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I try to start healthy habits and I usually give up on them. You get frustrated. and Yeah. Yeah. Like I, Again, I'm still really proud that I started putting lettuce in my Taco Bell. <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> but, I mean, it is baby steps. And I think it's not being so hard on yourself and and making sure that your self-care doesn't become a job. I think mm-hmm. that's the important thing is you do it for you. Don't do it because it's trendy or it's, you know, you're seeing other people do it on TikTok. It's your own self-care is for you. If, if you want to have a dartboard with someone you hate <laughs> and throw darts at it, like, go on. <laughs> I'm into that self-care. <laughs> I think another good part of self-care is like planning something and having something to look forward to. And like, I'm planning to go see Taylor Swift in May and that makes me happy and I can plan towards, that's not budget friendly, but you know. But it is, if you go back to our last episode, I guess, talking about vacations and how that is, you have something to look forward to, but Mm -hmm. you planned it out, you budgeted Mm -hmm. it out. So self-care can be in many different forms, but it's also, it's just, it's super important to do that. And I think it's kind of, You need to have that little voice in your head when you start getting stressed or things start getting kind of crazy and you're like, hey, I need to do this. I need to, I need some, I need some friend time or I need some, you know, go get my nails done and, or something like that, or go get Taco Bell (laughs) or go get another tattoo. Although Keiki, I think your parents are asking if there's any real estate left on your body to tattoo. You know, I was talking to my tattoo artist recently, um, and we were discussing the fact that there's actually way more skin on your body than you might think. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I have a lot of room. I have a lot of room for tattoos. I have whole legs okay, ready ex- for tattoos. Explain to me how the tattoos are self-care for you. I absolutely will. So, much like with going to the movies or getting a massage or a facial, when I get a tattoo, I have to put my phone away because... I can't really move, otherwise, you know, it could mess up the image. Um, And I have a tattoo artist that I'm really good friends with, so I go and she creates cool tattoos for me, and we spend, like, two hours with me just lying there, sitting there, whatever, and we're chatting, and it's quiet. It's the, The lights are usually dim because there has to be light on a specific area, and I can either completely zone out and think about nothing, or I can talk to her, and I don't have to worry about anything in the world. It's probably nice to have. It's almost like white noise, right, Keiki? The buzzing of the needle? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's weird, but like other people who have multiple tattoos will say this too. The pain aspect kind of helps in a really weird way, in a way of like it forces you to not think about the present moment because you're like if I think about right now I'll think about the fact that someone is stabbing me over and over again with a needle so you can kind of like force your brain to just not be there that's not self-care that's masochism (laughs) (laughs) what's your favorite tattoo I'm just curious on myself or in general no on you um I have one on my torso that's a fairy and I really like the fairy nice How, how many do you have oh you're gonna get me in trouble with my parents um about to expose you. I think I have 26. Oh, well. Wow. Holy <laughs> crap. That's awesome. And how old are you? I'm 25. You have more tattoos than the number of years you've been on this earth. <laughs> Does anybody at this that- table have tattoos? I'm just curious. No. No. Okay. I don't either. I've <laughs> wanted one. You know, me and my sisters when I was in high school and college, 
we all mm-hmm. we all wanted to get a matching tattoo, but I I can't commit to a certain piece of art that I want the rest of my life. I'm not so opposed I, well, to it. That's the thing. I think that's a generational difference too, because like my my parents and when I was younger, I had that same idea of like I can't commit to this for the rest of my life. But now I look at it less of like, oh, I have to love this thing forever. Like I have a tattoo of a boot on my arm. And it's not, oh my gosh, if I ever decide I hate cowboy boots, it's done for me. It's just, that was a moment in my life that I wanted to commemorate, and I did so with a boot. And now I know when I look at the boot, like, what that meant at that moment, and where I was then, and how important that was to me. So it's kind of like, it's less of a, this has to be my favorite thing forever, and more of a... At this moment in time, this is a thing that was important enough for me that I want to remember that moment. Yeah, that's what I really like about tattoos is they're talking about inside out. They're like core memories. You know, whether mm-hmm. whether you are currently enjoying whatever that tattoo meant at the time, it's it reflects your journey. I think that's super yeah. cool. Expression of who you are. I mean, mm-hmm. most people like show who they are with their clothes or makeup or hair and, you know, Kiki's making her body a canvas mm-hmm. and showing that. And, and it's one of those that... I'm sure when somebody first meets you, then you can sit there and explain, I got this because of this, this because of that. And it's mm-hmm. it's like a it's opening up almost even more of an intimate side of who you are and your different stories versus someone who doesn't have the tattoos, they'd have to, you know, unravel those naturally. And there's not triggers yeah. to kind of explain it. I guess you need a bull cast well, tattoo. I will- oh, I do. Cam, I was gonna um, say you need a bull. You need a bull tattoo. Oh. I look, I look like such a <laughs> douchebag. <laughs> you need well, the tribal. I a bear the tribal my dad. I could get a bull. Yeah, yep. that's true. I kind of want to go get a tattoo right now. Oh, Lord. I'm that's your it. self-care? That's my self-care. <laughs> Let's go. I can recommend every walk-in shop in Memphis. I'll get one of my cat. <laughs> Crazy cat lady. I got one yeah. for my cat. God. Katie, what would you get? I have no idea. I could... You could get some dance shoes. Yeah. My father would yeah, kill me. You could get if Sarah Jessica Parker signed your arm, would you get it get it tattooed? No. <laughs> okay. Kiki, let me draw some art like on your arm with a sharpie, and then a tattoo artist can trace it. She would do it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I would. Sorry, you, I'm using you as a canvas. <laughs> Where is this conversation I mean, going? This went from self care to just like tattoos. learning about tattoos. I, I like know. it. I know. I know. Okay, I feel like if we can wrap this up, um, obviously self care is something super personal, and so I'll go ahead and start this off with a bullseye, and then everyone's gonna bullseye with this one. But self care super important. You need to figure out what is your unique self care. And I'm going to throw it to you of trying to figure out the difference between self-care and maintenance. And that's where I threw that out there. I've triggered my brain to think that going in and getting my nails done or doing my hair or doing, you know, a facial or something like that is self-care, but it's really not because I'm doing it to have a certain appearance with work, things like that. And so just kind of have a little internal analysis of yourself and what makes you happy, what feeds your soul, what is going to give you that break. And again, you don't have to spend a bunch of money to have self-care. Bullseye. I'll go next. Like Katie said, self-care is super important, but it looks different for men, women, young people, old people. And my bullseye is that it, it doesn't need to cost anything or cost a lot. Just for, for me, self-care is just some, some peace of mind, kind of some alone time where I can think some things out. Um, and for me, that's, you know, disc golf what, or watching a basketball game, football game, and uh, just vegging out. So don't worry about spending a lot of money for your uh, self-care. Bullseye. My bullseye is, in the words of Donna and Tom Haverford, treat yourself, but not as much (laughs) as they do. Um, Just continue to, I guess, continue to do what I do, because I guess it's pretty good. Keep washing my face and drinking water, and (laughs) don't be a Katie. Bullseye. Oh, (laughs) my (laughs) word. Don't fall up and down the stairs, (laughs) but she is amazing, other than that. (laughs) Yeah, um, I guess my bullseye would be you're probably doing something for self-care right now, even if you don't acknowledge it. And just acknowledge what you do for yourself, because sometimes the act of saying this is for me, this is for my self-care, is all you need to do to make it self-care. Bullseye. Oh, there's the closing bell. And here we are again without court closing us out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for this episode all about self-care. 
If you'd like to find out more about me or Katie or Court, <laughs> we miss you. You can go to our podcast website. That's bullcastpodcast.com. We're also on all of the social networks, except TikTok, but maybe in the future. Um, the handle for those is at Bullcast Podcast. Uh, we also work at a place called Pickler Wealth Advisors. I don't think we've mentioned that today, yep. that we work there. But uh, you can go there and find out about our team, what we do, our boss, David Pickler. That website is picklerwealthadvisors.com. It's advisor with, with the. <laughs> That's usually my part. <laughs> it's and advisors so with an can O, I do it? not, yeah. It's with an O, not an E. There we go. That's advisors with an O, not an E. <laughs> If you know a person who would like to come on the show, give us a call or an email. We'd love to have them on. We've had some great guests, including Kiki and Nicole, Woo! for the third episode. I still think we need jackets. We'll work on that. We'll get on or it. Or the Christmas <laughs> sweaters. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get Katie excited. She will buy some swag. Mm-hmm. It'll make Court really happy, and I'll take pictures of it. Well, anyways, we're going to go. For now, <laughs> I'm Cam. I'm Katie. I'm Nicole. And I'm Kiki. See y'all later. <laughs>